This video is sponsored by Caravan Guard Insurance. A link to their website is in the description below. Hello and welcome to our new mini-series. This is part one of the mini-series and in this vlog I'm going to talk about choosing a motorhome or a caravan, which is a decision that many of you may well be facing and we ourselves have recently. So I'm also going to be talking from personal experience. Following on from this vlog, we're going to have advice on buying a new motorhome and advice on buying a new caravan. So please do watch the series if you're looking to buy and hoping for a little bit of advice. So let's get started. We've come to Cara Motorhomes and Caravans today who kindly allow us to film. What we're going to be doing is talking about making that choice between the caravan and the motorhome. And it is a difficult decision. I'll just make a start by saying for us, our journey began back in 2017 when we started looking at caravans. At that time, we had no interest whatsoever in a motorhome. We spent a lot of time going around dealerships, looking at caravans, and we ordered one in October 2017 at the NEC Caravan Show. We later took collection when it arrived in April 2018, and that's where our experience began. We had our caravan all the way up until June 2020, when we decided that caravanning was not going to suit our lifestyle anymore and we were considering a motorhome. Believe it or not, we had completely changed direction. We subsequently had three months with an Adria motorhome, which allowed us to experience motorhoming and make a comparison between the two. And then we made a decision on which to purchase. So let's go through these two and explain the process that you need to be looking at to make the decision. It might be that your mind is completely already made up or it might be that you're a little bit indecisive and not sure. So here we go. Behind me, I've obviously got a caravan and I've got a motorhome. Now, these are both Adria vehicles, but this applies to any manufacturer that you could be looking at. So number one, cost. Cost is a big factor in buying a new leisure vehicle. We're going to be looking at the price of new vehicles because it's easy to make that comparison because the price is fixed for the new product. So what about the cost of a new caravan? An entry level caravan is going to start at around £18,000 and such examples are the Bailey Phoenix, the Eldis Avant, the Swift Sprite or the Adria Altea. Prices then go up throughout the range and they'll go all the way up to a top price of around £36,000, and that could be for a Buccaneer, for example, a Swift Elegance, a Coachman Laser. Where you fit within that is completely up to you and your budget and how you choose to fund that purchase, whether it be through cash or a finance deal. The main thing you've got to think about though when buying the caravan, although the initial outlay may be less, you're going to need a tow vehicle. It might be that the car you already own is more than capable of towing. You may already have a tow bar. If not, you're going to have to think about buying a new tow car and having a tow bar fitted. When we bought our outfit, our caravan, we managed to negotiate a price of £21,000 for a new van and we had to buy a new tow car and our tow car cost us £33,000. So all in all, we spent quite a bit of money to get our outfit. Now let's have a look at a motorhome. Now motorhome prices, a new entry level motorhome, you could be looking at around £43,000 on something like an Eldis, then we could go up to maybe an Auto Trail F60 and then prices really do rocket and you could be going all the way up to well over £100,000. Again it's completely up to you how much you want to spend. It's important as well to think about as well as your motorhome are you going to need a second vehicle at home because this is not going to be suitable to use as a first vehicle so you're still going to have to have something at home to drive as your everyday car but when you balance the tow car and caravan purchase to a motorhome purchase you're actually not in a very different place and and it's important to note you can finance both vehicles through dealerships on on a pcp so that's the initial outlay other factors you need to think about. We're going to be looking at insurance. Now, with a caravan, insurance is not a legal requirement, but I would advise 100% that you insure your new caravan. 
this is a massive outlay. Insurance is going to cover you for theft, it's going to cover you for damage, and it's also going to cover you for third party risks, for if your caravan causes damage to somebody else or their property. Insurance wise, it's difficult to put a price on it because it varies a lot between the person where you live, where you store it, the initial cost, the security you have. But insurance for a caravan could start at around £150 and go up to three to £400, depending, as I say, on your caravan. We always paid around £230 to £250 to insure our brand new Adria Adora Isonzo caravan. So that gives you an idea. Motorhome insurance, it is a legal requirement if you're going to drive that motorhome on the road to have a minimum of a third party policy. It's very much like car insurance is motorhome insurance. So it is a legal requirement. The level of cover, again, you can have from third party to fully comprehensive. And that's again going to cover things, for, it, for example, if you're in a collision or if damage is caused to your motorhome while on site and things like that. Price wise, Massive factors again, including no claims, security, where you store it and your home address. So price wise, you could be looking at anything from £250 to up to £1,000. Why not visit the Caravan Guard website and obtain a quote for your caravan or motorhome insurance? There is a link in the description below. It's worth mentioning that the Caravan Guard motorhome insurance does include UK roadside assistance and that does not have any length or weight restrictions. European roadside assistance can be added as an option. Caravan Guard does receive five star trust pilot reviews. Next, recovery. Now recovery, if you're wanting a policy for recovery when you're out towing or driving, I'd strongly recommend if you don't get a policy of recovery with the insurance that you look to one of the clubs, the Caravan and Motorhome Club or the Camping and Caravanning Club to secure some recovery because if you buy privately some of them will stipulate length restrictions and weight restrictions so buy through the clubs. Recovery can cost you up to £250 for a year policy but that does include European cover as well. So have a look at that yourselves and get some quotes. Tax. You don't need to tax a caravan. You do need to tax a motorhome. A motorhome up to three and a half tonnes is going to cost you £270 a year. What other costs are we going to be looking at? Storage. Now this is really important. We've always kept our caravan in a storage yard. We've always used Kosoa and we've always used a gold standard. We have paid between £350 up to £800 for one year's storage. It varies dramatically depending where, on the, where in the country you are. And places I found that are very expensive um, are in the south of the country in the Dorset area. Whereas in the north, I have found cheaper storage. So budget, I would say around £500 for storage costs. It might be that your caravan's too big for your drive or it's not that easy to tow to your home. So it might be that you are going to have to store the caravan. Equally with a motorhome, it might be that you can't get that on your drive. So you're going to have to put that in storage. Another cost which you have to bear in mind for each year is servicing. Again, servicing is not a legal requirement on a caravan, but it often is the case that you must have it done yearly to maintain your warranty, and I would advise it as well for safety reasons. Caravan service varies between dealerships or whether you use a mobile approved workshop engineer, but I'd budget around £199 and upwards for a single axle caravan. Motorhomes, there's two types of servicing you're going to require. You're going to need a mechanical service on your cab, for example, the Fiat, and that might be a yearly oil change and then a two yearly service, depending on which chassis your motorhome is on. And you're going to have the habitation service as well, which will include the gas and the damp report and what have you on the habitation area. So realistically, you might be looking at three to five hundred pounds a year to service a motorhome plus any additional mechanical costs that you might have and you'll also need to MOT your motorhome when it reaches three years of age and obviously the caravan we've just got the basic 
um, service cost. So those are the costs. So altogether, in balance, it's fair to say that the likelihood is a motorhome in the long run is going to be a slightly more expensive leisure vehicle to purchase, run and maintain, but not massively as you can see from the figures. And it's also really worth mentioning at this point that motorhomes do hold their value extremely well. Caravans do depreciate, but they do hold some value. Again, a lot of it is dependent on supply and demand, but in terms of devaluation, this is probably going to hold its value in the long run a lot better than a caravan. Number two, driving license requirements. Your driver's license will stipulate what you can drive. The categories, if you look on the rear of a driver's license, will show you what you're entitled to drive legally on the roads. Now, if you passed your driving test before the 1st of January 1997, you will have B plus E, which means you can tow almost any car and caravan combination that you want. If you pass before that date as well, you should have a C1 on your driver's license, which means you can drive a vehicle up to seven and a half tonnes, which means you're going to be able to drive a very large motorhome. Now, if you passed your test after the 1st of January 1997, you won't automatically have B plus E, which means you can only drive a car and caravan combination up to a total of three and a half tonnes or a motorhome with a gross vehicle mass of up to three and a half tonnes. If you want to further information on that, you're best looking on the government website because that's a whole different vlog all about those weights and measures and it gets quite complicated. But the main thing you need to know is whether you can drive over or under three and a half tonnes. In terms of three and a half tonnes on a car and caravan, it's going to limit the combination that you can have quite dramatically. And it may well be best that you take an additional test to pass the B plus E, which is probably going to cost you around 500 pounds to pass that. And then you don't have to worry about the size of your combination. Three and a half tonnes on a motorhome, it's a massive market, I'll say that, it doesn't limit you at all. So if you don't have B plus C, a lot of people at the moment who don't are considering a motorhome because it, they're able to drive that. A bit like Jules, as you know, Jules does not have his B plus E. I've always done our towing, but Jules can drive the motorhome. So that's one to think about. If you do want a larger motorhome, you can take an additional test, your C1 category, that will probably cost you around about a thousand pounds, I believe. And then you can drive a motorhome again up to three, up to seven and a half tons, the same category as I have automatically on my driver's license because I'm old. So there we go. That's what your driver's license uh, will allow you to drive. Point number three is size, payload and storage. Now, let's differentiate. On the caravan, you're going to have an MTPLM, that's the maximum your caravan can weigh, and part of that is going to include your payload. An average payload on a caravan, and I use the word average, we're going to go for 160 kilograms. Some caravans it'll be less, some a lot more. You can upplate some caravans, which means it'll give you more payload. Not only have you got the payload in your caravan, you've got the payload within your car. So if you're a family, you can put more stuff in your car boot, you can put a bit of equipment in your caravan and off you go to site. The payload in your car and caravan may well be more than adequate for your family. A motorhome, now this is where you've got to be really careful because if you're buying a three and a half ton motorhome, you're going to have to watch your payload. The bigger the motorhome is, generally the less payload because the size of it is going to take up a lot of that three and a half tons. So if you're a family and you buy a large six berth motorhome, you might have a payload of something as small as 300 kilograms. And within that 300 kilograms, you've got to think about the people that are in it, all your clothes, all your equipment. You might struggle with that. If you're a couple and you're buying a smaller two or four berth motorhome, you could have a very generous payload of up to 600 kilograms, maybe even a little bit more. And that's probably going to give you a super payload, maybe more than you were hoping to get with the caravan and the car. So it's certainly worth looking at those figures and making a comparison. 
and as a family deciding which is going to work best for you. What I will say with size is obviously we've got different sized motorhomes. We've got extremely big A-class motorhomes like the Sonic and you can look at getting, if you've got your C1, a motorhome that can weigh up to, say, up to seven and a half tonnes. So your payload in effect on a larger A-class motorhome could be well over a tonne. It might be that you're wanting a small caravan, in which case you could be some, looking at something like the Action or a Swift Base Camp or a Bailey Discovery. Those are the small caravans. But again, on those, you've got to check your payload. So just think what's going to suit you best. It's also worth thinking about size for depending on keeping within that three and a half tonne limit and what size is your tow car. You don't necessarily have to have a huge tow car. You could tow something like this, probably with a, a large hatchback. So you don't have to go mad on a tow car. You don't need a big Rexton like us. Equally, if you do want to buy a big caravan, there's some huge ones on the market. You can buy absolute whoppers. So it's up to you which size you want to go for. The only thing you need to think about with size is when you arrive on site, you may struggle to find sites that will accommodate a large unit. As you know, we had our Adria Adora Isonzo, which was eight feet wide and 8.24 meters long. And we did struggle on site sometimes to find pitches that were big enough to, for us to fit on, especially if we had an awning as well. The same goes if you're looking at buying a big motorhome. If you're looking at a motorhome over eight meters long, some sites may struggle to accommodate the length of your motorhome. So always bear these sort of things in mind. Although I like a big one, bigger is not always better. And I've discovered that recently with motorhoming. So that sums up size and payload. These are the things you need to consider. What's going to be best for you and your family? Last but not least, we're going to move on to our last point, and that's your touring style. Now, this is really important to help you make your decision because it's not about what anyone else thinks you should buy or what about other, what other people do, it's what you do. And I'm going to talk from our experience now and hopefully this might help you. When we bought our caravan, um, our plan was to use it for touring for several weeks at a time. We lived up in the north and we were coming down to the south and we were having weeks away, as I say, on a, a site uh, pitching up where we were then going to explore from that site, enjoy the nice weather and then go back home. And we planned as well to travel to Europe and do the same there. Because of that, a caravan was going to be really useful to us. It was going to give us great internal space on site, that big eight foot wide. We knew we'd have a big lounge, we'd have a lovely washroom at the back, a great big island bed, all the storage in the wardrobe. And we, we found that that caravan worked a treat for us. So if your touring style is going away on a family or a couple's holiday for a week, two weeks, three weeks, I would say strongly think about a caravan because if you're parked up in one spot, it's really useful to have all that as space, your awning as well, but then to have your car because exploring a local area with a car is certainly a lot easier than a large motorhome. That's the fact of the matter. If you're planning though on shooting off for the odd weekend, doing pub stops and having a, a tour where you're stopping a couple of nights in each place, then that for me is when the motorhome is absolutely perfect. And that was what we learned from our experience with the little Adria Matrix. We literally jumped in it on the drive. We went off for a couple of nights. We went off grid and it was fantastic. We weren't having to worry about arriving on site and putting our legs down and filling up our water barrels and, and filling up the toilet flush and, and all those little things. There was none of that setting up. It was so much easier. But equally, when we went down to Dorset and we went to Devon, every day when we went off to explore that area, we had to put the bits away. And it wasn't difficult, I'll say that. It was quite, it was quite enjoyable, but it meant taking the motorhome. Now, we really got into that, but we had a six metre long motorhome, so it made it really easy and we shot off. But I found myself doing a lot more planning around where I was going to be able to park and how easy we could access places 
and especially with the height of the motorhome, height barriers on car parks. So what I would say is if you are dashing off for little breaks or you are touring a couple of nights in each place, it may well be that the motorhome is going to suit your touring needs. I haven't gone into masses of detail on this uh, vlog. I just wanted to give you an idea of the considerations that you want to be making. Now, as many of you may well know, after selling our Adria, we had the motorhome experience. And what we found is from moving down to Somerset and being right there in Somerset, Devon, Dorset and Cornwall, we've ordered a motorhome. And this comes a big shock to a lot of people. It came a big shock to me, to be honest, because if you'd have asked me last year, would I have wanted a motorhome? It would have been a big no. But our touring style has completely changed and that suits us more now for those quick getaways. If I was still touring for a week or two, staying on the same site, then without a doubt, I'll be sticking with the caravan. So hopefully that might have given you a little bit of a help, helping hand, just making a decision um, between the two. Whatever you choose, um, take your time, don't rush into anything, look at the models, look at the layouts, see which is going to work best for you. Ask people's advice. Don't always ask the uh, salesperson's advice because they want to sell you a product. I don't want to sell you a product, I want you to buy the ideal caravan and motorhome for you. And if anyone ever has any questions or you want to ask a question in this vlog, put it in the description, put it in the comments below and I'll happily answer that because I'll talk from my experience um, and hopefully if it makes you make the right decision, that's all that's important really. So there we go. Enjoy spending your money, enjoy your touring and hopefully enjoy the coming parts of the mini series um, as we go along uh, with those. So there we go. Please subscribe if you don't already. If you like the vlog, please hit the like button. If you didn't, I'm really sorry and hit the dislike button twice. So as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.